In this video, we'll try to solve some applied optimization problems. Before we begin, let me tell you one thing. Applied optimization problems are technically the same as finding min and max. So let's make a note right here. Same as finding min and max. Same concept, same procedure. But there is a slight difference between them, and it's all about how the main function is given to you. So far in min and max, the main function we have seen is in the form of f of x. You just needed to differentiate it to get f prime of x, so that you can look for the extreme values at the three locations, f prime of x equal to zero, f prime of x undefined and endpoints. Here in applied optimization, a scenario or a situation is given to you instead, and then you have to derive the main function yourself based on the information you can extract from that scenario. Now, we usually call the main function in an optimization problem as the objective function. which means a function with a purpose. And then we solve min and max to find minima and maxima of this objective function. Now let's take a look at this example down here. Here we are supposed to design a box from an A4 paper. So there you go, we have a scenario right here. Box from an A4 paper. The dimensions for an A4 paper, 30 centimeters by 21 centimeters. So on the right hand side, let's assume that this is an A4 paper. The longer side is 30 centimeters long. Now the shorter side is 21 centimeters. At this point, let's add more information about this design. This box can be made by cutting a square off of each corner. Cutting squares of all corners. This means that you are going to do this. Cutting a square off of this corner. All right? And same here. This one too. Four of them. Now the size of the square is up to you. Size of square. Up to you. Which means that you are free to make it small or make it big. But let's assume that the length of the side is x. Right here, and same thing here. And same for the rest. Right here, right here. Same size at every corner. After that, you are going to fold along this line. Okay, fold it up. Same thing here. Along this line. And same down here. And this one on the right. Once you fold them up, it's going to be a box. This part right here is going to be the base of the box. And this is going to be the side of the box. Same thing here, down here, and over here. The side, four sides. And now the most important part. The objective is to make this box hold the largest volume possible right here. So make a note right here. Largest is about maximum. And our objective is about volume. Make it the largest that we can. Now let's work on this. The first step that we need to do here is to find the objective function. Number one, find objective function.
and right now we know its volume. So it's going to be this, V, that we need to find. And V depends on X, the length of the side of the square. Equal to what? So volume of a box, it's going to be the area of the base times the height of the box. Now let's find the area of the base. It's going to be this part, this rectangle. And since we cut x both from the left and from the right, this side is going to be 30 minus 2x long. And this shorter side over here is going to be the same. It's going to be 21 minus 2x. x off the top and another x off the bottom. So the area of the base is going to be 30 minus 2x, the longer side, times the shorter side, 21 minus 2x. What about the height of the box? It's going to be this side at the top. You fold it up. Same thing here on the left. Same down here. And same over here on the right. Once you fold them up, the height of the box is going to be x. So this is the height. So let's put it right here. The height equal to x. And this is our objective function, v as a function of x. You can choose any value of x that you want. However, you need to keep in mind that our objective here is to maximize this function find the maximum of this v of x. Maximize so that the volume of this box can be largest as it can be. At this point we know it's all about finding absolute maximum of v of x. And now we move to the second step to look for extreme values of v of x. Well, at this point, we know where to look for them. The first location at v prime of x equal to 0, flat tangent. Second location when v prime of x is undefined. And last location, endpoints. Since we definitely are going to need this v prime of x right here and right here, let's work on it. But before that, let's simplify our objective function. It looks a little bit messy here. Let's combine all these terms. So we have v of x. Now we combine these two parentheses together, this and this. So it's going to be equal to 630 minus 102x plus 4x squared. And then we have parentheses right here. Then times with x, the height of the box. Now x goes in, we have 630x minus 102 x square plus 4 x cube. Now we can find v prime of x right here equal to. Now we need to diff these terms. Let's start with this one. 630 x we get 630. Then this one minus 102 x squared. We diff this, we get minus 204 x. And then we diff this, 4 x cubed. So we have plus 12 x squared. And this is our v prime of x. Now let's take a look at the first location, 2.1. When v prime of x equal to 0, 
Let's bring the expression for v prime of x down here. 630 minus 204 x plus 12 x squared. And we want these terms to be equal to 0. Then I divide both sides by 6. Divided by 6 over here and over here. I get this. 2x squared minus 34x plus 105. Again, equal to 0. Then I need to solve this quadratic equation. But it turns out that this polynomial right here, these terms, are not easy to factorize, which means that I have to rely on a calculator. So I put these terms into a calculator and let it work for me. And this is the solution I got, two values of x. x equal to 4.056, the first value, and then the second value, 12.94. What about the unit? The unit is the same as above, it's centimeters. 4.056 centimeters. And same here, centimeters. And now we have two candidates for the extreme values at the first location. These two. So make a note right here. Two candidates. Now let's move on to the second location, 2.2. When v prime of x is undefined. At this point, let's take a look at the expression of v prime of x right here. As you can see in this expression, we don't have any square root, we don't have division, we don't have logarithm. You can put in any values of x and v prime of x is well defined, which means that v prime of x is well defined everywhere. So let's make a note here. v prime of x is well defined for all values of x, all x. Which means that this condition down here, v prime of x undefined cannot happen. No candidate for any extreme values. Now let's work on the third location on the right hand side. 2.3 Endpoints This one is a little bit tricky to find because it's not given to us. So we are going to have to find these endpoints by ourselves. First of all, we are talking about practical values of x here practical cuts you can make on an A4 paper. We want to know the lower limit you can cut the paper and also the upper limit. Now talking about the lower practical limit you can cut the paper, it's basically the smallest cut you can make to it. So let's make a note right here. Smallest cut you can make to this paper. So smallest x value equal to well, the smallest cut is you cut nothing. So it's going to be equal to 0 centimeter. Make a note. For this one, you cut nothing. And this is our left endpoint, 0. Now, when it comes to the upper practical limit, it's basically the largest cut you can make. Largest cut or x value equal to what? Let's find out. At this point, I want you to take a look at the paper. As you can see here, we are going to cut x from both sides. So on the longer side, you are going to cut this piece on the left. And then you have to do the same on the right hand side. This one. Now on the shorter side of the paper, you are going to cut this piece at the top and then another piece at the bottom, right here. This means that the largest cut or the x value you can make is until you get to the middle of the paper, because you need room for the other side. So you can cut over here, all the way through, and then the largest cut is going to stop right in the middle, right here. 
As you can see, we need room for another X on the left-hand side. This cut. So the largest practical value of X on the longer side is going to be this. 15 centimeters, half the length of the longer side. Same thing here on the shorter side. The largest possible cut you can make is until you get to the middle of the paper on the shorter side, right here at the middle. Because once again, we need room for another X down here. Another half, another cut. So the largest practical value of X on the shorter side is going to be this part right here. Half the length of the shorter side, which is 21 divided by 2, we have 10.5 centimeters. And now we have to choose between the two, 10.5 centimeters or 15 centimeters for the overall largest practical value of x here. As you can see here, in this case, we have to pick the smaller one, 10.5 centimeters, because it's not going to make any sense to cut 15 centimeters on the shorter side, both top and the bottom. We don't have enough room here. So we have 10.5 centimeters down here for the overall largest practical cut you can make. And let's make a note here that this is half the shorter side. Half the shorter side. Well, to think about it, if you cut 10.5 centimeters off the top on the shorter side, and then you cut another 10.5 centimeters off the bottom, then you already cut through the paper. So at this point, we have the practical range for x value from 0 to 10.5 centimeters. So left endpoint, 0, and the right endpoint, 10.5. We have two candidates here. Let's make a note. Two candidates from endpoints. The first one, x equal to 0, and another one, 10.5 centimeters. So overall, up to this point, we have four candidates, two from the first location, number one and number two, nothing from the second location, and we have two more from endpoints, third location, number three and number four. Now, before we spend time to check every one of them, let's try to eliminate the ones that don't make sense here. For example, this one right here, x equal to zero. It means that we cut nothing. If we cut nothing, then we don't have a box, which means that it doesn't have a volume. So for this one, v, when x equal to 0, is going to be equal to 0, no volume, which means that we can cross it out. Once again, our objective is right here, to design a box with the largest volume. But here, no volume, so we don't count it. What about this one, x equal to 10.5 centimeters. Does it make sense here? If you cut 10.5 centimeters off the top of the shorter side and then cut another 10.5 off the bottom, then you already cut through the paper, which means that the volume has to be zero too. So volume, when you cut 10.5, it's gonna be equal to zero. You cut through the paper on the shorter side. So we can cross it out too. What about this one down here, 12.94? Does it make sense? Well, as you can see here that the largest practical cut you can make is 10.5 centimeters, and 12.94 is larger than that. So it's not going to make any sense to cut 12.94 right here. So let's cross it out. Which means that at this point, we only have one candidate left, this one right here. And as you can see here that this candidate is from the first location, when v prime of x equal to 0. This means that we can use the second order derivative test for this one. Let's do it right here. Second order derivative test. So we need to find v double prime of x is going to be equal to. Now we diff this v prime right here. 
Let's start with this one. I diff this, I get 0. I diff this, I get minus 204. So minus 204. And then I diff this, this one I get 24x plus 24x. Now I put in this value at 4.056, the only candidate left, equal to minus 204 plus 24 times 4.056, and this is equal to minus 106.66. As you can see here, v double prime of x at this point is negative. When you are negative, you are sad and have a frowny face. This face, and when you have this face, you have a local maximum here. So this one, local max. Which means that the only candidate that we have left here is a local maximum. And since this is the only local maximum we have, it means that it's also the absolute maximum as well. So also, absolute maximum. So our answer is right here for this example. This means that for an optimal design, you need to cut a square with the length of the side of 4.056 centimeters. Same thing over here, same length, 4.056 centimeter, and it's going to be the same down here. This corner, and same with this corner, and same with the last one over here. All four corners. Now we can use this expression right here, v of x, to find the volume when x equal to 4.056. v when x equal to 4.056. This is equal to 30 minus 2 times 4.056 times 21 minus 2 times 4.056 times the last one, the height of the box, 4.056. And this comes out to be equal to 1144.2 cubic centimeters. and it's the largest volume you can achieve with this kind of design.